Howdy everybody, Louie fans, just me Mike, I'm uh, getting to you and talking to you about uh, another movie I had seen over the weekend, um, if uh, you haven't seen it on, uh, even if you have seen it, like Matt and I, we, we did a review of um, we did a retro review of uh, basically Perfect Blue, the, the, the Satoshi Khan film that came out in 1997. Um, we went, uh, it was uh, re released into theaters on um, over the last, what was it? I mean, they re, -re, -re released it in theaters last week. I think the first day that it was. Uh, released was last Thursday and they were running the, they were running the um, movie through I guess like Sunday and so um, it was just it was just a movie that we had uh, you know uh, basically grew up on and absolutely loved so um, when we heard that it was being re-released into theaters uh, we decided that we were gonna go see it and um, anyway, uh, I just had some, you know, some extra thoughts about the, the film that I wanted to basically talk to you about. Uh, you know, it was, it was, it's just kind of amazing, you know, that that movie, when it came out, that it was uh, right at the, the beginning of the, the World Wide Web like internet phase um, that nobody really realized that like the, the the power of the internet yet about where it was going to basically go and um, so it was it, it was just crazy you know like go back and watch it like uh, 26 years later and see you know how uh, this filmmaker basically predicted a lot of things that would go on about you know how um, like uh, this how Mima the um, our main character that she was that she, that, she, that you know that uh, people were so um, like the char like characters in the film were so you know uh, desperate to one want, want to like be a part of her life that you know that they would actually go about and um, you know make like a personal pay a web page for her and like you know act like it was actually her and um, you actually see it in the film about how when uh, she goes and she f first finds out about the, the um, about the Bema's room page about how initially she was you know. Uh, um, taken back by it, and she was, you know, and, um, pretty much she was, uh, what, what are you gonna say? Um, she was, she was definitely uh, entertained by it, and but I mean, the more she went into the page and like delved deeper into the page, the the, the, the more scared she got about how like this person that she didn't know um, knew stuff about her that she really uh, had, they, they would not have no way of knowing without her, without actually, you know, having a personal relationship with her pretty much. And I mean, it's just, it's just frightening. I mean, uh, I remember Matt and I, we were talking about it on our way out and of the, of the theater, and this film was sort of, you know, like, predicting, like, catfishing before there was catfishing, you know, I mean, I know that the, uh, I know that, the, like, the term was basically, came about, what, in 2010, off that movie Catfish, that documentary Catfish, um, but, uh, and that came out, like, what, the, that came out, like, 13 years later, uh, that would be 2010, so, but, um, in this film, uh, 
like uh, that, that, that's that's what was going on in the in the movie was you know that that this person was pretending to be Mima and uh, basically catfishing a bunch of people into thinking it was her when it's not her and even actually you know going as far as like emailing like Mr. Mamamia about how he about how she, she's the real Mima and the the one that's basically you know on TV becoming an actress is not the real Mima don't listen to her we need to basically get rid of her and um, get rid of like basically the like anybody that's trying to um, tarnish uh, Mima's good name by you know i.e. you know like basically like you know uh, trying to uh, like you know kill the screenwriter of the TV show TV TV show she's on uh, sending you know um, explosives in the mail and uh, I mean that, that that letter was actually supposed to go to her but the, um, I guess it was lucky that her that her uh, agent slash manager um, got a hold of it before she did, and uh, it you know severely injured him. And I think she, I think the I think that uh, he did get. I did. I, th I do think he he uh, he was killed too, if I remember correctly. I know Mr. Mamamia was after he failed to try and after he failed to kill uh, Mima. The the real the you know the real Mima didn't want to was tired of his failures, I guess, and so she took it into her own hands to uh, make sure that Mr. Mamamia um, was taken care of, and. Um, so it's just, it's just a it's just a frightening movie to watch about you know how somebody could uh, steal your identity and not only that but like I mean in the, in the whole process of the film too like I mean as we get as we dive deeper into the movie about how basically. You know, uh, Mima herself didn't even know who she really was anymore you know, because she was like listening to uh, the people around her, like saying that this is what she should do. It's instead of you know going with her own gut about what she should do with her life because like she, and she was you know naive and she was naive and thinking you know that, that these people will take care of her. And um, that this is the, 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 the best solution for her. And uh, quite frankly, um, like uh, when you see what when you see the screenwriter, you know, basically saying, you know, hey, yeah, let's just basically uh, get this fresh face and basically soil her by doing the doing the R scene in the strip club. That was. That was telling, and you know, and quite frankly, the um, her her agent didn't really care either, because all he wanted to do was basically, you know, uh, bring some more money into their into their firm, and so, um, like, why didn't why didn't the other two from Cham like basically um, like uh, go off and do their own their own um, thing with? With uh, trying to become an act, become actresses either. I mean, they were, they they were still pop idols and putting out music, but for but for some reason they decided to pick Mima to do it, and, I, and that's probably because Mima was probably the more attractive of the three, maybe, and so sort of like what happened with uh, Rumi in the in the film, because Rumi, you find out like uh, that. Uh, I think his name is Mr. Takadoro. Is the uh, is like the the head uh, is the head of the agency that Mima uh, is a part like is a part of like that takes care of her and Cham. And he even like says like right in the in the film about how uh, like them doing these things for the um, 
for Cham, like releasing albums isn't paying the bills. And this is the reason why that they need her to uh, go out and venture out and become a, a pop idol was so that they could uh, start bringing in more money to their company. And it was just like they were using her as like a, as like a, as a horse pretty much. It's like a workhorse, and that wasn't really too nice, because, I mean, Mima didn't seem like she really wanted to do that. She wanted to do her own thing. She want, and, um, she wanted to be a pop idol, at least at that point. And this whole thing about becoming a... About becoming, like, a, an actress didn't seem like it was really on her to-do list of what she wanted of you know like what she really desired and but it seemed like she was too afraid to tell anybody that and the only person that was really listening to her about possibly wanting to about because but about staying about being a pop pop idol was Rumi and Rumi was like you know her like mother figure in the film I mean, I know she had a mother, uh, because, I mean, she talks to her mother on the phone early on when she's, like, drawing a bath, but, um, it didn't seem like her mother and her had a real close relationship like, you know, Rumi and her did, because Rumi was, like, coming over and, uh, helping her set up her computer, which was, like, you know, funny to see, um, like a like a computer, or like it was definitely an old, uh, like Apple Macintosh 2, which were, um, back then were like insanely expensive. Um, I remember that we had, we had a, like a whole computer lab of them in my, at least one of my schools. I think it was my elementary school and um, they were, yeah, back then they were ex extremely expensive. Uh, it was definitely like the computer that from, uh, the movie Blank Check, if anybody's ever seen that, where the, where the kid basically gets a blank check and, may, and you know, uh, gets a million dollars and, uh, people wonder how he basically spent a million dollars in, uh, in like a week in that movie, and then, like, when you go back and rewatch it, and you realize, you know, he spent, like, like he basically spent, like, I think it was, like, $725,000 just on the house that he bought, which, I mean, I'm in real estate now, um, that's my profession, and to uh, see somebody do that, you know, buy, like, a house for, like, $725,000 is, um... It, like back in like 19 when did that movie come out 1994 I think yeah it was 94 because uh, the, um, the girl that played Shay she she was in Dumb and Dumber the same year and she really hasn't done much since then because I believe she has like health issues just like you know I think she has MS just like um, Christina Applegate and Selma Blair so when she basically came down with MS, she just kind of disappeared from the limelight altogether for, and so, I mean, I do know that she's still alive, from what I understand, um, I think her name is also, in real life, is like Shay or something, or something like that, but anyway, um, back to the, the movie, um, so, here we are with Mima, who's basically battling her, you know, psycho her psychosis episodes uh, from, you know, extreme pressure, of, like, from extreme pressure from trying to basically put this agency on her back and uh, become an actress. And at first, like, when she says that she's going to um, quit uh, being a pop idol, I mean, she really has no other... Uh, backup plan, but but to do this, um, to do the the act the acting full time, and you know, um, and when we go and we see that she's a part of this, like uh, 
what is it? I mean, I don't even know if it's a soap opera or if it's just if it's a regular TV, like a primetime TV show. Um, we see her on the show called Double Bind. And when they cut it from her, you know, quitting to be a pop idol to uh, doing the show, um, we think that she's far, further down the road than she actually is in her career as being an actress. Because, like, when we go and we see her later, like, when we cut back, when we cut it from her being a pop idol to being, uh, to being now a struggling actress, she only has one line in the TV show. But yet, like, her agency, her agent, um, basically strong-armed her into quitting her music career. And so we see her, you know, go through the motions of the struggles of whether or not she's like basically like, you know, she's push, she's uh, pulling back, she's pulling back and forth between what she wants to be in the movie. And just like, she's lost her identity, which is like the whole theme of the movie is, you know, the, is, you know, losing one's identity, especially when um, Rumi, you find out later, is, uh, is, you know, trying to, is trying to take over her identity, because Rumi thinks that she is actually the real Mima, and Mima is the, is, like, the imposter, and that's, and so, because Rumi, basically the same thing happened to her early on, because uh, I mean, it's revealed earlier on in the in the film, like when Rumi is basically pushing back on Mr. Takadoro and saying, you know, that um, Mima is a pop idol. She's not an actress. Why are we doing this? Like, why are we trying to, like, you know, stray her away from the path that she's already on? And... Um, Mr. Tagadora and she's and Mr. Tagadora is like, well, pop idols they don't make it in this out here anymore, and we really need to basically, you know, uh, get some money to siphon back into our business, and the way to do that is by you know making sure, by putting Mima out there as you know an actress and rebranding her. And then, like, he basically takes a shot at Rumi because, like, he says something about Rumi about being her, about being a former pop idol and it didn't pan out. And Rumi, like, is ashamed and says, you know, that she's sorry that she basically became uh, irrelevant over, over the years. Because unlike, you know, Mima, uh, like, the only thing she had really going for her was her voice. Uh, she's not, she's not the most attractive lady. She's not, she's not, um, easy on the eyes like Mima is. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, body shame anybody, by the way. I'm just saying that that's just, that's just the, that's just the facts. Cause I mean, you, you, you see how, uh, like her eyes like are, you know, not symmetrical and, even she basically, um, at the end, like she does, she doesn't like how she looks. Like she, uh, has like a mask of Mima that she's wearing or I can't, I, I don't remember if it's a mask or if it's just, if it's a wig, but like when she like loses her hair at the end and, uh, it's thrown in the street, like she like runs after it, uh, to put it on. And then when she puts it on, like, uh, Mima's face is on her again, and it's, like, covered in blood, but, um, anyway, I mean, like, uh, where was I going with this, um, so, anyway, th th this, this, this film reminds me a lot of, actually, what happens in, what happened in real life, I know this movie, I know this movie was based off a book that's Tashi Khan, you know, um, that he, you know, interpreted it and he, you know, made it his own with this movie and put it into this medium. But I do know that, um, that this basically has happened in real life where, where, uh, or I'm 
were a manager or I mean like I mean she wasn't really a manager but she was uh I mean she wasn't the you know the um like the agent or the manager of the of of the pop idol but she was like you know um the uh the head of the fan club of the person and it was uh I mean if anybody's ever seen the movie Selena uh, what happened with her in real life, and ironically, that ha that that happened like you know, two or three years before this movie was released, before like the height of you know the internet and all that other stuff, where you know um, the S Selena's you know manager or her um, fan club manager, she was you know uh, supposed to be um, ahead of her fan club and taking care of funds and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then Selena unfortunately finds out that the woman has basically been embezzling money out of the out of her fan club. And then what does the woman do? She like she basically goes after Selena and, and kills her and like shoots her point blank and, and decides to take her out because she didn't want to go to prison. So I mean I just saw a lot of similarities between like what happened what basically happened in real life with that situation and what happened with here i mean it's a little different because this actually i mean um this this isn't really this this has nothing to do with you know uh with Rumi trying to uh not getting get in trouble about her actions or anything it has more along the lines of the fact that Rumi is uh, she, she starts off as herself, but the further along in the film it goes, especially after the R scene in the, um, in, in the strip joint with the TV show, um, Rumi has basically, um, she's no longer the, uh, like the dominant alter anymore. And so it's become, it's now the real Mima is her now new, basically uh, dominant alter. Uh, so this, this film tackles on, you know, like disassociative identity disorder. And from what I read as well, like, I mean, there's some people that were um, kind of confused about how Mima could also basically be, you know, uh, being affected by this as well, because I mean, because Mima is you know seeing things as well throughout the film. But uh, from what I read and heard, that this associative identity disorder can uh, basically affect people around them too, and especially if they're directly involved with the other person. Um, but I, I, I mean. Uh, or, I mean, it was another personality. I don't remember. But anyway. So anyway, we're we're going through this. And then we find out, you know, that basically that Rumi is the one that's behind uh, setting up the web page. And trying to take, trying to become Mima. And the last we see of Mima, uh, like of Rumi is, um, of Mima and Rumi is Mima is now, you know, like a successful actress so I guess like it had been like a couple two or maybe like two or three years down the road after this all happens and Mima still goes and visits Rumi and at this point Rumi is no longer she's basically just like I said like earlier like a little like a few minutes ago that um she her her personality of Rumi shows up maybe For a glimpse at a time but quite frankly now she's her like uh the real mima alter has basically you know take is basically you know taking care of rumi and she is now the main alter and so i think i, I mean it's, it's really like you know a, a frightening film of if we don't take care of our mental health of what might happen to us, you know, and 
I mean, I really feel bad for Rumi in this situation, just like I feel bad for Mima, because, I mean, they're both victims in the situation, and Rumi, um, unfortunately, she basically, like, I mean, I, I, I think she just felt so low about herself, about who she was as a person that she did that she basically became irrelevant to the point where she just is now watching others succeed where she felt like she should have been more successful in her life that you know of her failed dreams and opportunities that she has you know latched on to another personality that she felt like that she could that, that was more deserving or more fulfilling and decided to take that on and in that sense Rumi lost herself just like Mima was losing herself throughout the movie um anyway that's what I pretty much got out of this uh Satoshi Khan unfortunately uh he passed away uh, not too long after I think Paprika came out, or maybe, I think actually Paprika came out before, um, uh, he passed away, or maybe it was, a I mean, after he passed away, I can't remember, but I mean, I know Paprika came out in like 2007, and I remember seeing that on the big screen, and that was a, that was a great movie, it was a great film, and, um, I mean, his works are still being felt today, and, uh, I'm thankful that I got to see this on, in the theaters. Um, it was a great experience. It was fun seeing this with my friend Matt. Um, if there's anything that you think I'm missing about this, um, you know, comment below. Tell me what you think. Uh, I think this is actually, a, like, you know, a quintessential, like, perfect like one of the perfect movies it makes you think makes you sit back and wonder and want to watch it again and try and figure out more things and you know that's just what a great film does and so that's just what I got out of it was you know when I was watching this with Matt was that uh I got a lot of like it just reminded me a lot of that that whole real life scenario with Selena and I can't remember the what lady's name, but I mean, there, there's a good movie about it with Jennifer Lopez and it that came out in the '90s too. Um, it was just a really sad story, and, and I mean, this this film here is a sad story as well about you know what happens if uh, we let life basically overwhelm us to the point where we lose ourselves. And I mean, I've been there. I mean. I remember after my wife passed away in 2019 that, uh, I mean, we were together for, you know, uh, over a decade. And I mean, that was, that was my identity it was like, I was, you know, that was, we, we were husband and wife and that was my identity. And to go from that to like in the blink of an eye, finding out that she passed away and the days and the weeks and the months and even the years that followed um, that, you know, that you just go from being one thing to it's just not, it's not that anymore. And then you have to f try and figure out who you are again. And I mean, still to this day, I'm still trying to work on myself and figure things out, but Unfortunately, that's life, and life keeps moving, and we're always learning, and if we're not learning, then I'm, I'm, and I'm also, you know, in recovery and stuff, and I'm like 13 years sober, and I just remember, you know, uh, hearing a long time ago in the rooms that basically, you know, if we're not basically working on something, then we're basically, you know, regressing, and we're, we're going back in our recovery and stuff. And so we always have to keep working on ourselves. And because I mean, 
life doesn't stop for anybody, and unfortunately, you know, that thing, bad things happen to good people, and um, that's just what happens, and so, and I guess that's why, I mean, I, I, I like this movie 